Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince was directed by David Yates, again, <laughs> and is the only Harry Potter film I've seen only once before. I remember thinking at the time that it was boring, uneventful, weird and slow. I never went back because I thought my opinion to be final, how wrong I really have been. Thematically, visually, creatively and emotionally, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince is pretty stunning and I'm a little embarrassed to have thought otherwise, but I guess that's the benefit of hindsight. What Yates is able to achieve with this story, moving the narrative forward and closer than ever to the eventual conclusion and the progression of Harry's interactions with other characters for a change, is incredibly admirable and at times moving both sweetly and in some other darker ways. Harry was facing the very idea of fighting Voldemort and his Death Eaters in Order of the Phoenix while still being shut off by people he needs help from. Half-Blood Prince moves far away from Harry being isolated and shows him, maybe for the first time, actually enjoying life. The fight is still out there and Voldemort's forces creep closer and closer, but Harry is experiencing new affections, new connections with his friends, and finally, a real relationship with Albus Dumbledore, whose moments here have become some of my favourite for the whole series, which is definitely intentional. Daniel Radcliffe is typically great as Harry, Emma Watson and Rupert Grint show off some new, more advanced talents as Ron and Hermione, Evanna Lynch as Luna is still my favourite, Tom Felton gets so much more to do as Draco, which is incredibly welcome. Alan Rickman's Professor Snape is much more layered, newcomer Jim Broadbent as Horace Slughorn is delightful and saddening all at the same time, and the performance that Michael Gambon achieves with Albus Dumbledore is truly incredible in so many ways. So far, I'd say that this film is the best performed Harry Potter movie. But what about the story? The writing? Is it as simplistic and loose as Order of the Phoenix, or going for an overlong, near-total adaptation like Chamber of Secrets? Kind of both, I guess, in a way. Half-Blood Prince definitely benefits from screenwriter Steve Close returning as the sole writer, as he nails the character's individual voices more and knows how to take a large book and make every element feel wrapped in and tight and necessary. To a point, though. The love potion stuff is a bit dumb, there's a ton of subplot based love triangles and Harry and Ginny getting together just does not work. It's a problem with the actors having no chemistry and and with all the movies beforehand just not getting Ginny right as a character so those scenes between them just become very awkward very quickly. At first I had some larger questions about how important it was that Snape was revealed to be the Half-Blood Prince or what was the purpose of having both Harry's investment into the mind of the Half-Blood Prince through the Advanced Potions book as well as investigating Voldemort's past in the Pensieve. It all seems like a bit much as well as Draco and the Black Cabinets, Slughorn Secrets, the Horcrux Cave, Dumbledore's Hand Curse, the Unbreakable Vow between Snape and Narcissa Malfoy and the battle Harry and Draco are locked in for the whole movie. But there is a reason behind these things. Half-Blood Prince is about the choices of light and dark and about obsession. But it does cause a powerful infatuation or obsession. And limits. The former theme, communicated by visual cues like the black and white birds Draco uses and the black and white colour schemes that David Yates and cinematographer Bruno Debelnell achieve in momentous scenes, and the latter theme is all over every character. Harry is obsessed with the Advanced Potions book, Lavender Brown is obsessed with Ron. Dumbledore is obsessed with learning Voldemort's secrets, Draco is obsessed with completing his goal assigned by Voldemort, and most importantly, Voldemort was once so obsessed with Horcruxes and dark magic that he actually did it and became the Dark Lord. It's a cautionary tale about not going too far or else despair and even death awaits. Bruno Delbonel's cinematography here is absolutely impeccable and look no further than the extraordinary lighting he achieves in the bathroom fight, Horcrux cave scene and the students finding Dumbledore dead. Uh, 
Spoilers for that one. The production design is still great and composer Nicholas Hooper doubles down on his Order of the Phoenix themes for another layered and powerful score. I have found so much now that I never noticed. The darkness is truly terrifying, particularly the flashbacks to young Tom Riddle, the revelation of the nature of Horcruxes and the entire Horcrux cave scene, but there is a light streak running through that still leaves you with a smile on your face in the end. Despite some large tone jumps scene to scene, the absence of Ralph Fiennes, a hefty runtime of two and a half hours, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince is pretty great. Rich in powerful themes, gorgeous visuals, heartbreaking twists and series best so far performances from Daniel Radcliffe Alan Rickman, Emma Watson, Tom Felton, and Michael Gambon. This was an excellent rediscovery nearly 10 years later, and I'll say that Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince is an A-. A-? That must be a mistake. So Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, have you seen it? What do you think about it? What do you think about this review? Let me know in the comments below, and if you want more Mr. Movies, click my channel link coming up in the center of the screen right now, and thanks for watching.